Okay, so we are uh, <clears throat> going to do a uh, dual commentary match here. Tobias uh, challenged me. I guess he's a, a viewer of the channel. And uh, we're going to play a match, and I will uh, upload the games and do postmortems as usual. So, um, And when I find out uh, where Tobias is posting the videos, I will put in uh, links to those as well. So you can check this out from uh, both points of view. So let's see if we can uh, get a game going here. Here we go. It's a 5-5 game. It's uh, unrated. He's actually quite a bit higher rated than me, so I think uh, unrated is a fair thing to play. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to, uh, um, I was trying to uh, play some warm-up games, and uh, I was trying to play until I won a game, but I kept losing, so my rating is at a low point at the moment. Okay, well, let's go for the Sicilian anyway. What the heck? Maybe I'll play the uh, con Sicilian. Anyway, this is my usual time control. I think he, he likes to play at a faster time control. That's my impression. What is this? Oh, well, I can't do a con Sicilian if he does that. This is the uh, Smith Mora Gambit, so I decline with knight f6. And this is the normal line. Um, so we transposed into a C3 Sicilian or Alapin Sicilian by playing like this. Ah, yeah, so he knows his stuff. Most <laughs> players will take here, but uh, I think it's uh, good to leave the pawn hanging there for a bit. Let's see, I can challenge this pawn, I think. <clears throat> I'm also gonna play knight uh, c6 at some point to put extra pressure on d5, e5 there, the e5 pawn. But I think, uh, Putting this pawn up is, is good. It opens a diagonal for the bishop, which might come out and pin the knight here. So with the knight on c6 and the bishop on um, g4 there, maybe I'll be able to put pressure on the center. And eventually he will, he will capture here on... Uh, eventually white captures on d4. At least that's, that's the way it usually goes. So there are these checks white can play here. Um, I think the most common move is bishop to b, uh, rather c4, kicking the knight, developing the bishop of the tempo, yeah. And then um, I usually just play here. Let's see, is there a trick here though? Because um, the knight is already out. A lot of times they play this first and then bring the knight out. So with the knight out, I'm just wondering if there's this uh, trick of sacrificing on f7. Knight here, bishop takes, king takes. Knight comes in here with check. That does not look like enough compensation to me. So <clears throat> I'm going to assume I'm okay here. That can be a, a problem if you've already played bishop g4. So you do have to do have to take care because um, the uh, knight check after they sacrifice the bishop, king takes knight check, and then and the bishop is hanging on uh, g4. Queen can just take it. So let's uh, develop, get the other knight out. So I think it's not safe to play bishop to g4 here. Although maybe, <clears throat> maybe that's something I should check out in the postmortem. So maybe I'll develop my bishop to f5 instead of g4, bishop f5. So bishop f5 and pawn to e6. And um, leave the tension in the center. Um, after I get an e6, then I can retake here with the bishop. Okay, so he takes now. And um, I think I retake with the queen here. Queen is a target for his bishop, but um, well, right now he doesn't own the f4 square. So, well, this is interesting. <clears throat> so the question here is, do I want to, do I have time to 
develop my light squared bishop, or should I just play e6 and castle and leave this bishop inside the pawn chain? I, actually, I'm kind of attracted to that idea. In this case, when he takes back this pawn here, I'll end up with an isolated queen's pawn. And this e6 move blunts his bishop immediately, so that takes care of some of those tactics on f7. So he takes back now. Yeah, so this is the isolated pawn. It's well supported. Two attackers, two defenders. And uh, and uh, White still got that active active position that he was going for with the uh, smith Moore gambit. It's just that um, I, I had I got some time to develop my pieces too, so I don't I don't succumb to an immediate attack. Let's see. He's got knight before here. He does have knight uh, knight b5. He also has knight g5, supported by the bishop, or bishop g5. I'm going to, on knight b5, I'm just going to drop my queen back to d8. I don't think that's a problem. These guys are defended. Yeah, so I think my only problem in this position is the, uh, well, this knight on g6 is, is, so maybe there's two problems. The knight on g6 is sometimes a bit out of play, although here it can go to... Uh, d5, and then the other problem is the bishop on c8, the typical problem bishop. Yeah, so he just goes there defending. An extra defender for his pawn frees up his knight to move. Um, so can I play knight to d5? He takes, I have to take with a pawn, and then it'll be this ram structure. which is probably just uh, even. How about if I try knight b5, knight b4 to uh, d5? Um, is he going to get a tempo on the queen? Yes, he can do that. I don't see that I'm getting killed here, though, so... <clears throat> that way, if I get a knight on d5 and he trades, and I can take back with a piece, he trades, I can still take back with a piece. So try and try and keep him keep him with that isolated pawn. Now we're both uh, taking our time here. We're down to two minutes and uh, we're only on move 12. <laughs> so we'll probably uh, start moving quicker when we get to the increment. Yeah, so he moves the knight with tempo, hitting my queen. Um, this is not loose, so I can just drop my queen back, I believe. So, but it is a loose piece, so maybe there's some tactic based on taking advantage of the loose piece. I don't know. I don't see it at the moment. It'd be a, you need to find a double attack, I guess. Okay, but he's using this opportunity to uh, complete his development, get a rook into the game, and um, I will do the same here. Bishop to d7 and uh, rook to c8. It seems like um, the logical way to play this. <coughs> He can stick a knight on. Um, he can stick a knight on uh, g5 at any time because he's got uh, two knights and the bishop all pointing at that square. I can take his bishop off at any point though. Yeah, maybe that's a problem. Knight here. I take the bishop. He takes back, and then I can take the knight. Uh, what else has he got? He can just start taking stuff. But I, I, as I, since I can take back with pieces here. Um, okay, so he's bringing his queen up to look at uh, this this diagonal. So knight here will come with a mate threat. So let's stop that. 
<clears throat> so yeah, the knight on g6 makes things a bit awkward. Um, you know, I have to maneuver the bishop to um, to uh, c6 to get it into the game. <clears throat> okay, so that was his idea. He's coming into the um, d5 square. e5. Coming into the e5 square. Um, so, can I take his bishop here? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, so if I play rook here... can take my bishop goes there mm -hmm. okay well that's good that lets me hit trade off this night which was a kind of an annoying piece a problem piece okay so let's uh <clears throat> put the bishop on a good diagonal there okay so maybe he's going to push these pawns forward do i want to play a5 and stop that Hmm, I guess. Ah, he's just making space for his bishop. Okay, well, let's uh, lift up my queen here. Yeah, I was thinking he might play that. So if I take it, is he going to take back with the pawn or the rook? Not sure. Let's see. That's defended. Let's see what he does. His pawn still stays somewhat isolated. I'm giving up a good bishop, so maybe this is a bad move. <laughs> this could be a mistake, but uh, yeah, I was feeling a little bit cramped there. So, what is his queen doing? I wanted to play a bishop to b4, but um, b5 hitting his queen. But um, I was starting to feel a little uncomfortable with uh, with my knight here, undefended, and all his pieces piling up on it. An underdefended knight there, so that might have been a problem. Okay, so he's going for the mate. Uh, let's see, I can't block here. Can bring the um, can bring the knight back. Bishop there, what does that do? Ah, he's going for the um, going for the D um, the uh, D6 square. Okay, so let's attack his queen. Queen goes there. Okay, well let's attack his king. Bishop goes there. Let's get rid of the dark squared bishop. So he did speed up his uh, he did speed up his tempo. Uh, just uh, going into an end game here. So what is this end game like? I don't know. I mean, he does have this loose uh, pawn here. Yeah. 
and uh, well, let's just um, see if I can take advantage of it in any way. Okay, there he goes. So he's going to push these pawns forward. Um, I don't think this is going to be too much of a problem for me. Well, maybe he's not going to push right away. <clears throat> okay, so let's um, step the king forward, not, not putting it in the way of the bishop. I'm going to put my pawns on dark squares, so I want to play, yeah, I want to play this pawn here and this pawn here, and then my king is free to uh, block these pawns over on this side. So I'm going to bring my king in to, to slow down where his extra pawn is. And uh, so I'm going to play the, uh, the B pawn forward. Try and force a trade here. You know, that... Um, Hmm, I don't know. This may be helping him in some way. It's going to end up with an upside past pawn here. But, um, well, let's keep the bishops on and see how it goes. Should be a draw, I think. If I just sit here with my king, I, I keep his king from entering. And um, what was that little noise? I don't know. Is he offering a draw? Yeah, okay, so that was a draw. Well, interesting first game. We will um, play another one here in a second. <clears throat> 